been a pretty cool drive just to get out here to Swan Quarter where the ferry is. Farmland, there's a tractor right there. A ton of farmland and country and swampy areas. We went over the Pungo River before, which is a river we actually transited a bunch of times on our trips up and down the East Coast. It's kind of cool to go over that same river. We've been on like four or five times. I reserved a ferry to get over. There are three different ferries. We're leaving from Swan Quarter and this one you can bring a vehicle as well. Since we're towing the boat, we not only take up one, two, but three spaces. So it was a little difficult to get a reservation, but we did. And we also reserved a spot at a campground right on the beach through the National Park Service on Ocracoke Island. And then we also reserved our ferry back to make sure we had a space. Looks like a pretty cool place. We're gonna be like right on the beach. There's no electric or anything. And I heard there could be some no seams, but we have our bug spray and we have our fans and we're ready to explore. There's also a boat ramp on the island, so we're gonna get out on this fancy high field and have some fun. was such a workout so we need three spaces instead of one just barely too just by a few feet it was 15 bucks a space so 45 bucks um, total for our whole rig which isn't crazy I bet when we get up to like New England like Nantucket and stuff we try to bring this rig on that ferry that's gonna be a lot more money we're on the ferry and we got a little friend right in front of us that jetty is barking at you? Never. Here we go, we're going to Ocracoke. <laughs> you like the ferry ride? It's so funny sitting in a truck watching the water go by right next to you instead of on our own boat watching the water go by. We're doing nine knots in our truck. It's probably faster than we drive on the highway. <laughs> so this is where we are right now. North Carolina, zoom in a little bit. Pamlico Sound, uh, Swan Quarter up in there. And then we're just coming out and going over here to Ocracoke. So there to there. And then this is the rest of the Outer Banks all up along there. And then you get into Virginia right up here. I just whipped up a nice cup of coffee right in our, our house back there. Sierra was doing some uh, some video editing over here. Jetty <laughs> and the little nest to hang out in. You comfortable back there? We're about an hour away, as you can see from our chart. I'm excited. Like I said before, we've sailed up and down it a few times. And we've been on the trawler. We've been on Neverland on this uh, sound, Pamlico Sound. Tula, I've been on Tula on this Pamlico Sound. And Adrenaline a couple times. It's just so neat going on the same sound, just a whole different way. And we've passed the Outer Banks a ton, but we've never stopped and explored the Outer Banks. We've always been wanting to. We stopped one time in a little spot called Manteo, Manio, Roanoke Island, I think. We've always wanted to stop and explore the Outer Banks, but it was always something like we were either in a time crunch or the, we had a broken part that one time yeah in roanoke island it wasn't good wind a wind direction to be able to like tuck in or it to was too good and we went straight offshore 
Yeah, yep. So we've just passed by the Outer Banks a ton of time. And We're yes. excited to be here. You're really excited. I think uh, hopefully, what do you expect to do here on Ocracoke? I really want to go clamming. Uh, hopefully there's some waves and we could go surfing. Billy really wants to kite board and maybe some fishing. It looks like a lo long portion of the island is kind of like undeveloped, just marsh and, and wetlands and natural and stuff like that. So it would be really cool to have the, the high field to explore that whole area. And maybe we can find Blackbeard's treasure. This is a big pirate area, Teach, Edward Teach, right? Edward Teach? Yeah, Blackbeard. This was his old stomping grounds over here. I'm hungry. You want some beef jerky? Yes. Or some pistachios? Both. We try to eat as healthy as possible, but I don't know how people do it, traveling on the road all the time. Like, it is so difficult, specifically for us right now, because the refrigerator's not working, so it's just hard to plan on food to have and prepare, like, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then like when you do pull off to go to the bathroom or get fuel or whatever, the only thing around is fast food. Most of the places you pull off to is literally only fast food. And maybe if we're lucky, we can find a grocery store and, and make something ourselves in the back. But even that requires a little bit of planning. Once in a while, we'll get lucky and we'll find like a really good, nice, healthy restaurant. But it's difficult, it's not easy. So, it is a little bit easier with the camper though, instead of just traveling on the road without that. Because if we do find a grocery store, we can just stop and get something and cook it up right in the back. So that makes it easier. Oh yeah, we're pulling in. Lighthouse. Cool. Does it feel like we should be arriving here by boat? A little bit. Alright, there she is. We're all tucked into our campsite. Take a peek around here. This is a really nice campground. I like it a lot. Kind of open, but then you got some brush and trees and stuff over here. The bathroom's over there. A little barbecue stove and picnic table. And those are showers right over there. And then right over here, on the other side of the dunes right here, we have the ocean. Should we go check it out? Yeah. Look at that rig. Looking good. The ocean. Nice, huh? Feels good, I wanna go in. It's definitely getting a little colder. <laughs> We're gonna go do some kiteboarding. This place is so awesome. It's completely empty right now. I'm sure in the summer it probably gets packed here. And the ocean is a two minute walk right on the other side of the dunes. Um, and it's just, it's so beautiful. It's amazing. Back in our sweet, humble abode. <laughs> we had such a good time. It's so cool to be here on Cook Island. We are just gonna go to sleep because we're gonna get up early and get out on the high field and have a full day of boating. Climbing. 
I was going to say boating adventures, but we're going to try some clamming and fishing and exploring, I think, all day tomorrow around Ocracoke. Okay, I gave this campground like five stars until about 9 p.m. last night when Noceums started eating us alive. They came in through every single tiny little crack and they are everywhere. <laughs> Literally everywhere. Jenny was miserable. We were miserable. And look at our bed. Covered in no seals. And these are all dead from the fan. And look at the ceiling. There's no hookups here, which is fine because there was a breeze. However, the breeze died. And we had to sleep with the sheets over our faces with the van under us, and it was just the worst <laughs> night sleep ever. <laughs> like seriously, look at our bed. It's covered in no sealing blood. All right, we're getting all prepped up. We're just loading up the high field, and uh, we're gonna get out in the water. We had a rough night's sleep, like Sierra said, and it's hot out already, so. Hopefully we can find some relief on the water out there and hopefully we can get some clams. Hopefully we can find some cool stuff. I'm excited to use this thing. You ready? I've trailered and launched boats all my life, but I've never done it with a camper on the back of the truck. So this is gonna be the first time for that. It's gonna, it's gonna be pretty interesting. I really don't like your unsureness. You're supposed to be convincing me that this is gonna work just fine. It's gonna be fine. Don't worry about it. Went pretty good, I think. All right, good job. How was that? Good. How did it feel in the truck? Fine, actually. I thought it was going to be a lot more difficult to get back up the ramp, but it was fine. Stay there, Missy. All right, good job. We get some clams. He literally just threw like an amberjack out of the water. Oh man, this is crazy. This is so cool. Oh! See, look at him get the fish. Oh my gosh, he's got it in his mouth. This is so cool. There's dolphin all around us. There must be like, what, 40 dolphin? And it is as calm as it could get out here, especially for like late morning, middle of the day. It's just unbelievable. Look at all of them up there. Yeah. Whoa. I think they're mad we're not going faster. They're like, I want to play. Please, right ah. If we could see dolphin like every single day for the rest of our lives and every day is just as exciting. Look at all of them. Cool and some of them are like literally like this big. And some of them are huge. huge. A very good first day back on the water. I know, complete success already, right? <laughs>
Even if we don't get one clam, yeah. we'll be happy. I think our time's up. We've been out here for like an hour just hanging with the dolphins. So let's go get some dinner and we'll let these guys have have, have a chance fun. to hang out with the dolphins by themselves. Right, where do you want to go? Probably like right around here, Howard's Reef. It looks like it's kind of like a sandbar. Last time this will be brand new. Throw it off to the right because the current's dragging us to the left. Just cooling off. Just doing some laps. <laughs> All right, here we go, peeps. We're clamming. Woo! Oh. Teddy wanted to go climbing too. Here, can you ride on my back? Come on. Right on my back. No? Nope. You want to ride on my back? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, if we had a little, we need a little floaty thing for Jetty. It's just so nice and calm out here right now. Just glassy. Most people clam with clam rakes. We don't have clam rakes and we're not going to buy a clam rake just for this time we're here and then have to travel with it forever. So we're just using our feet. This is what we did growing up on Long Island. And you just kind of dig with your toes and your feet in the sand. This is like a hard packed, I'll show you like a sandy bottom, like a gray, but kind of a hard pack, sandy bottom. Kind of doing the clam dance. Wait, wait, wait. What? You found one? Ah, uh, just a shell. Bummer. We need both halves and the thing in the middle is what we eat, so that'd be nice. You guys hear that? It's so quiet. There's some birds off in the distance and just some fish jumping and that's it. No noise. All right, no luck at spot number one. We're there for 45 minutes? Nothing, not one clam. So we're in the wrong spot. Oop. I didn't know it was in gear. So we're in the wrong spot, so we're moving on to spot number two. And uh, yeah, just going through this little area. It looks like maybe a commercial oyster farm or something like that. Oh. I got two at once, but they're all mini. All right, we're definitely having a lot more luck here at our second spot, but they're all mini. And we don't even know if they're the right kind. Yeah, they look different from the hard shell clams I'm used to getting on Long Island. Look at them. But they're so small. Like, here's one of the biggest ones. And I think that's just getting borderline big enough to eat because they're supposed to be an inch thick. That's probably almost an inch. But look, we also found a scallop. Well, anyway, all these guys are a little too small, so we're gonna have to throw them all back. I just wanted to take them and show them to you guys. And we don't even know if they're the right kinds. Like, the ones that we usually get on Long Island that we've seen some shells for here are a nice smooth shell. These are all rigid. New spot, here we go. Found one. Woohoo! So we just came to this spot, super, super shallow. We just barely made our way in here. But as soon as I stepped out of the boat, I felt it. And these are the clams we're more familiar with, hard shell clams. I don't know what those things were that we found before, but uh, this is what we're looking for. This is kind of big, but we can definitely eat it. Tell me the regs. Uh, they just have to be one inch thick. 200 per boat or 100 per person. Look, Jets, I got one. Oh, another one. Oh, yeah, crushing it over here. It just takes the right spot, and then all of a sudden. Ooh, found the small one. I haven't found one that small yet. 
So if we're gonna make this a catch, clean, cook video, we gotta show you guys how to clean clams. And <laughs> basically, unless you're eating them raw in the half shell, you don't have to clean them, except like this. Every time we pick one up, we can just kind of rinse the mud off of it in the water. And then I always let them sit in a bucket of water just so that they like flush themselves out and then we'll, we'll kind of rinse this water out with clean water. They can rinse themselves out a little bit as they're just sitting there. And they can do a bunch of stuff with clams. We usually just throw them on the grill and as soon as they open up, they're done. Then you just eat them like that. Dip them in some butter, which is amazing. Um, but with the big ones, sometimes they get a little chewy so you can turn them into clam chowder or pasta with clam sauce, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can eat them raw on the half shell. Just the, the smaller ones are the best raw and you just break them open and suck them down with some cocktail sauce. Bottoms have all been completely different. The first spot we went to was like hard packed dense sand. And we didn't find any. Second bottom was more like seagrass, but pretty dense packed sand and seagrass and stuff. But we only found babies. And this bottom is that one. This bottom is complete soft gooey mud and you sink in Depends where you step. Sometimes you sink in an inch, sometimes you sink in like six inches. Um, but this has been the best. Guys, welcome to Cooking with Captain Cook. With who? Captain what? Cook. Captain Cook? Pirate. Cook. Captain Cook. Cook. No, there's Captain Cook too. Anyway, I'm going to be your captain and cook today, and my name is Billy. <laughs> We're making some steamed clams. Super difficult and technical, so you got to follow step by step. First thing we have to do is grab a big pot. That'll do. All right, we have our pot with water. Then we're gonna put all the clams in. All right, we'll also be doing some wild rice. All right. Sorry, I got a little busy in the kitchen. I forgot to film some stuff, but we got some broccoli, mushrooms, onions, garlic, butter, our clams are starting to open in there. And then we got our wild rice that's just pretty much done. And uh, we're, almost, we're almost there. We got some garlic butter. Put that on this side. There we go. The clams. <laughs> so if this huge one is good, then they're all gonna be good. Take them out. This is what an inside of a clam looks like if you guys have never seen it. Clam is a bivalve. They are filter feeders. That's why you need really good water quality. Yeah, that's why anytime, I'm pretty skeptical of seafood in general and especially shellfish. And that's why whenever we get it ourselves, I always like to make sure that we're by like real close to an inlet so you know that clean water is flushing in and out of where these bivalves are living and they're probably pretty healthy. Dip it in a little butter. The bigger ones are always a little bit chewy, but still delicious. Thank you so much for coming with us today. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do that because we have lots of cool stuff coming your way as we travel with this truck camper trailering boats. And thank you so much to Highfield for letting us borrow this awesome tender. I was really impressed with it today. It is really nice to have a boat that allows you to get into like really shallow water, but also handles like when on our way back it was a little bit choppy is handling it super comfortably and we use like a gallon or two of fuel all day long pretty impressive we will see you next time bye <sighs> salty <laughs> it's actually really good <laughs> okay everybody today we're going to show you how to do the clam dance are you ready i'm ready to the right now y'all two stomps two stomps Take it back now, y'all. Now everybody grab your clams. <laughs> to the right now, y'all. Two stomps, two stomps. Take it back now, y'all. 
Now everybody grab your clams! <laughs> We're running a huge sale in the tool shop. It's 15% off the entire shop to make room for new designs and new gear. Just click the link in the description and use code FALL15. Sale ends Sunday the 25th.